From mid-century to contemporary, public to private, we're in search of the very best in art. Homes, happenings, stores, restaurants and people. Things that defy categories. The perpetual freshness and cool of modern never ceases to captivate us. Join us for another edition of Modern Dallas TV to discover what's going on and where in the modern world. Modern Dallas Real Estate this week is 6035 Prospect. We're here in a home that's not just a home, it's a work of art. And this is a beautiful project. I'm here with Ed Murchison of Virginia Cook Realtors. Ed, we've both known the collaborators in this project. Josh Nemo, the architect, Alan Kagan with Dwellings, and it's come together and, and obviously we've spent time in this house. This is a beautiful home. It is a very special home. I call this an expression of art for living. Uh, Mr. Kagan loves art, architecture, and this home is a beautiful expression of both of those two things. Uh, he poured a lot of himself into this house, as if he doesn't always on all of his projects. But this house was somewhat uh, kind of a working collaboration between the architect and the builder, and somewhat a laboratory for experimentation. One of the primary things that I love most about this house and one of the special things is this floor that we're standing on. This looks like terrazzo, but it is actually polished concrete. Many, many man hours went into accomplishing this floor. They mixed special color aggregate into the concrete, ground it down until they got uh, to the right look, and then they ground again and again and again and polished it. And it's really beautiful, it's very special. Well, that's really the way you get a great fine table. Exactly. With a beautiful finish. Exactly. So the process, and, and you know, when you talk about process, this is a process. Yeah. There's so many great attributes to this home, the inside out. Exactly, this house was set up for indoor outdoor living. And as you look around the house, you get 10 foot ceilings, floating walls that are punctuated by glass. So you've got art and then you've got nature as art in this house. Um, I think a lot of what is incorporated into this house is a really great fusion between modern and some mid-century modern elements. You look at the common brick pattern or the common bond brick pattern on the house as well as the flat roof and the wide overhang planes. It's a really clean, beautifully executed house. And obviously the pool, the, you know, as little landscape there is, every part of it has been utilized exactly. efficiently. Exactly. Each room really kind of looks out into a garden space or a courtyard area, so you got a beautiful view from every room. Even the master bath has a wall of floor to ceiling glass that opens out to an outdoor shower. I mean, that's really merging uh, indoor outdoor living. Good. And tell us a little bit of any features and benefits that come with the home. This house, uh, you've got the recessed reveal uh, baseboards throughout the house. All of the doors in the house are either full pivot doors or uh, solid wood sliding pockets doors that go all the way to the ceiling. Uh, all the lights are set up on a special lighting system where you can turn them on and off with one switch for the whole house. Um, the integrated appliances, built-in refrigerator and dishwasher in the, uh, the kitchen, and really even the kitchen itself, it doesn't read a kitchen. All of the built-ins, the way the cabinetry goes all the way to the ceiling, and you'll see that same look copied throughout the house in like the closet doors. Uh, instead of having ugly closet doors, you've got cabinetry style doors that go all the way to the ceiling, so you have a really clean, smooth finish well, everywhere. Well, the house is tremendous. I mean, I grade it on one to 10, 10. <laughs> this is a special, special house. If someone's looking for a very cool modern house, this house had a lot of love and attention to detail lavished on it because of the people that were involved in it. And homes like this don't come along very often with the current market and the amount uh, or the cost for land anymore in this area. You could not buy a, buy a lot and build this house back for the price of $969 that we're asking for it today. And lastly, if you have an art collection, this is a home for the arts. If you don't have an art collection, this home will make you aspire to, to. buy <laughs> art because it is, it's a beautiful home. Ed, where can they find this home? You can find it on my website at midcenturymoderndallashomes.com. And if you want to see all the modern listings in Dallas, visit our website at moderndallas.net. Thanks, Ed.
Modern Dallas Art this week is here at Circa 12, Temporary, down on Levy Street in the Dallas Design District. And I'm here with Dustin Orlando, co-owner with your wife Gina. We're here to see uh, Double Edged. Yes. Tell us a little bit about this great group show. Sure, so it's our uh, summer group show. Uh, it runs until July 29th. Um, you can come anytime during gallery hours or by appointment. Uh, the show features uh, eight artists um, from New York, Los Angeles, and the DFW area. Um, we have Revoke, who's a Los Angeles-based artist. Lauren Silva is in this show. Rachel Owens, Manny Prieres, Jimmy Baker, Paul Anthony Smith, Chris Pierce, and Amber Renee. And uh, all of these works, great pieces. Thanks. But Revoke has an interesting piece. Yes. So this uh, painting that's behind us here, this is a 72-inch uh, by 72-inch spray paint on canvas. Uh, Revoke is a world-renowned graffiti artist. He's really well known throughout the, the world if you're into graffiti or follow spray painting as you know art. And um, anyway, these paintings are uh, large-scale spirographs. Um, what he's doing is stretching a circular canvas, putting it inside of a um, a big pre-cut hole and then uh, for the colors he takes a, um, a gear that's cut with a CNC router and he has a, a contraption that he's made that he's engineered that puts multiple spray paint cans in at once with an actuator and uh, the gears are just kind of placed on as he sprays through each gear so it's pretty much a life-size uh, spirograph and he does these in solid colors and multicolors as well. So moving along, obviously, there's a lot of different work. Eight artists, great, I mean, tough to choose which are the ones. But Jimmy Baker's work stands out for me. I love what he's doing. I know this is a triptych. You may only see two, but there are three pieces. Yeah. Tell us about his work. Sure, so uh, these particular paintings are uh, 36 by 48 inch. Um, they are mixed media on canvas. Uh, Jimmy uses a digital process in, um, it's a combination of digital printing, and oil painting to get to his images. Um, he'll run uh, oil paint through a big huge scanner typically used for you know billboard printing or something like that and then uh, when he runs that through that printer he'll um, put some of his graphic elements on there and then he'll go back in and paint on that so it's a combination between like technology and hand painting and you know how those kind of lines can get blurred sometimes and it's like post internet world and you know, and applying that to paint and surface and, and, and making paintings of it. And so a majority of his work is based on that, but primarily it's, you know, about beauty and aesthetic and merging these two mediums in this process. So when you look at Jimmy's work, there has to be a story behind this piece. Sure, there are. There's several stories to him. Um, a lot of the imagery that you see inside the, the paintings um, is very subtle. It's toned down. This particular painting is uh, a photograph of a woman at the uh, Million Woman March. Um, taken a little while back where he went, and it's actually a woman holding up a sign, and in this area is where the sign would be. But he's removed some of those elements to not, you know, make it a little bit more attractive and appealing and kind of uh, leave the viewers uh, open to interpretation as opposed to like being in their face with, hey, this is what this is and why not. So Double Edged has, a, has its own story. Sure. Give us a little sense of what Double Edged means for this show. I mean, you know, most of these people just kind of just, you know, believe that, you know, we're having a, uh, a crisis going on and there's, uh, you know, things that, uh, there's a flip side to every coin type thing. And, you know, although um, it may not reflect in a lot of this work, I think it's kind of just the undertone and the, the current state of situation that's going on in, in the world. And it's like finding beauty in something, you know, that's not so beautiful sometimes. And, uh, you know, I think a lot of this work kind of plays into that. And actually, that's art. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. So where can they find you? Oh, uh, circa12.com and Instagram at circa12. And if they want to visit the gallery? We're open Tuesday through Saturday, 11 to 5, and by appointment. And location? 1811 East Levy Street, Dallas Design District. And if you want to see all the modern art listings in Dallas, visit moderndallas.net and see the arts page. Thanks, Dustin. Thanks, yeah. Appreciate it. Yeah. The modern lifestyle begins in the home, and you'll find a range of unique living spaces across Dallas's most desirable neighborhoods. Start your search by meeting one of these modern realtors. Poget began his career with a degree in architecture, followed by years of interior design work, including the interior design of several luxury high-rises and commissions for clients' dream homes. 
Poche's distinct background makes real estate a natural fit. ModernDallas.net celebrates 10 years of modern in Dallas and as we continue our journey on Modern Dallas TV, this year we'll be promoting different parts and segments of modern that we've experienced and one of the great parts of modern in Dallas is mid-century modern and I'm here with Ed Murchison. Ed, you've been doing mid-century modern selling these homes over 10 years. Absolutely. Well, I consider myself an architect wannabe. I started down that path. I've always loved mid-century modern architecture. When I moved to Dallas in the early 80s, I started looking for a house in the early 90s and I was looking for a mid-century modern home and back then people weren't even calling them that. Uh, if you spoke to a realtor, they called them 50s houses and um, I realized this is an underserved part of the market. The most, for the most part back then, the real estate industry didn't really understand that vernacular. Uh, fast forward over the past 10 years, or even 15 years, the explosion of interest in mid-century modern architecture has just gone crazy. Um, I remember when I got into the business, finding mid-century modern homes back then, um, you really had to seek them out. And now we have buyers that are coming all the time. We have actually more demand for mid-century modern than we have supply, to be quite honest about it. So just to clarify, this, there, there is a fundamental difference. Mid-century, 1950s, and there's a specific design element that characterizes them as that style home. Absolutely. But what we found over the years is there's some great niche neighborhoods. Right. Tell us a little bit about some of those neighborhoods. There are some great neighborhoods. I mean, you do find mid-century modern houses kind of scattered all over the Metroplex. Um, in any area that was being developed and built out during the 50s and 60s. But some of the key areas that you're looking at, White Rock, Lockwood, some areas of Lake Highlands, the Disney Streets, Midway Hollow. Um, you know, there's areas up in Richardson, Richardson Heights, Canyon Creek. I mean, there are, there's great mid-century modern homes out in Arlington. Fort Worth's got some great mid-century modern houses as well. So obviously there, there, there's a lot of great pockets, great, great homes with uh, great builders from the past, Janelle. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us how coveted these are and where do they, and where do they start price point wise these days? Well, the Janelle houses are probably the most sought after. I call them, you know, Dallas's version of an Eichler because they were homegrown mid-century modern houses and they have a very honest aesthetic about them. Those houses are highly sought after. Most of those are going to be in the Lake Highlands area. Um, then you've got homes in Midway Hollow and, and the area around the Disney streets by Thomas Scott Dean and Gordon Nichols. Uh, those are highly sought after as well. Prices, they're continuing to go up. Uh, because of the demand for mid-century modern houses, a mid-century modern house in a neighborhood will generally command it can be anywhere from 10 to 15, sometimes pushing 20% premium over a similar, more traditional house in the same neighborhood. That's how sought after they are. Last question, from a preservation standpoint, how many of these homes are actually continuing on their journey of life as a, as a home to a family, or are people actually coming in and tearing some of them down? We do lose some in the city. We are a young city and we don't value our history as much as we should. However, for the most part, mid-century modern homes are so sought after that they are being embraced and they are being saved. Um, I see kind of an interesting trend that started to happen over, you know, even in the last particularly three to five years where we're starting to see people embracing more the authenticity, the authentic mid-century modern house, all the way down to the pink tile bathrooms. Um, you know, we're starting to see some rejection of those granite countertops being put in those kind of houses. So if you find a true, beautiful, well-maintained time capsule, those are well sought after as well. Well, you can find mid-centuries all over Dallas. One of the great parts of the, our programming, not mine specifically, but there's the White Rock Home Tour, there's the Modern Mile Dallas Home Tour that comes up in October. There's the Cliff May Home Tour. There are a lot of different tours. You can find these mid-century modern homes. You can find them for sale on moderndallas.net. And you can find Ed at Virginia Cook Realtors. Ed, it's always been a pleasure. Ten years. Maybe it's another ten. Another ten. Great. Thank you. Thank you.
To wrap up this edition of Modern Dallas TV, we cover local modern events and the art scene. Check out the calendar and the arts page on our website at moderndallas.net. There are always great events from the Dallas Architecture Forum, Preservation Dallas, and the Dallas Center for Architecture has great walking tours in downtown Dallas. Open houses every week, always a great selection. You can create your own mini mod home tour and Todd Camplin covers the art scene for us. From art galleries to museums and artists, you can check out his page on the website. And lastly, if you're in the market for a modern, mid-century modern, contemporary, home, high-rise or loft, we simply have the finest moderns in Dallas. For this week, we appreciate you being part of our show. We'll see you later.